create the right plan for your brain to follow, keep it when the pressure starts to build. First of all, you're going to start with some self-diagnosis. And you're going to figure out how good you are under pressure, mentally. So do a little bit of an inventory. How does pressure affect me? How do you actually know that you're prepared for the challenging situation or condition that uh, you're about to enter? How good are you at dealing with distraction? Can you maintain a state of flow? Use these questions to start to do an assessment of yourself so you can figure out where you want to uh, strengthen your skills. The only way to perform well under pressure is to practice under pressure. It's the only way. So think about some ways that you can put something on the line for yourself when you're training. You might train with peers and bring a video camera along, knowing that you're being videoed and there's going to be a debriefing afterwards. Leave your ego at home, because if your brain isn't worrying about protecting your self-esteem, it can be focused on what you're doing. So be very watchful for any kind of stray thought about what does this mean for me and my self-esteem and my, uh, and my ego. Self-consciousness, that internal focus that we were talking about, we have to actually detune that. And really, in its simplest form, the way to detune that is to work a lot more with an external focus than an internal focus. Keywords that we're going to call process cues. Glide, arc to arc, flow, heal, whatever works for you. A week, two days before your level four exam, and there could be negative anticipations. You could have looked at the weather and got, it's going to be pouring. All kinds of things could trigger negative anticipations. So we learn how to deal with those by pausing when you notice it happening. So if you notice too much stress or negative arousal, you're going to say, you know what? I actually don't have to do anything right now. I can just pause and settle myself. So it is important. But even though it's important, I'm going to treat it like it's OK. Focus on your skills and your plan in a very conscious way. If you have an image of how you want it to be and how you want to feel, rehearse that image in your mind. I just want a neutral perspective to stop that flow of, uh, of negative thinking. We need to learn visualization skills and, med and mindfulness or meditation skills. What you do is you practice it for like three or four months before. Because during the course of that three or four months, you actually train your brain to react in a much more subdued way to different pressures and stressors. And then we neutralize past failures. You might think about the last time you were in a high performance situation where you were doing something, competing, it meant something to you, and it didn't go well, and you weren't successful. And neutralizing the past failure simply means that you take from it something good. So these are skills that actually, as you practice them, change the way your brain responds in that situation. So you want to be able to let go of negative thoughts. It's not because somebody told you up the chairlift, think positive, don't think that, it'll be okay, right? That's not how you let go of negative. You learn how to let go of negative thoughts by actually learning how to let negative thoughts just go out of your mind.